boo. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> That was courtesy of Carol. I had a thing for pirates a long time, not that long ago, but um, love, love pirates. Uh, pirates of the Caribbean didn't hurt, okay? <laughs> so anyways, we just got back from, um, where were we? We were at Redondo Beach for a family wedding. And um, it was absolutely a blast. John went out with little girl Lennox for a uh, walk, and this is what he found. Here we go. Okay, it's not every day you see witches on that, but wait, there's more. There were, John said, maybe 70 witches out there, and some had their dogs on with them. <laughs> it's tough being a witch these days. <laughs> well, so the wedding was absolutely fabulous. The wedding was outdoors in Long Beach. There's a real huge golf club there club golf course there and you go back in a little hidey hole and there's a perfect place to have an outdoor wedding and of course the weather was spectacular we were not we were asked to not take pictures with our cell phones to really just take in the ceremony enjoy them enjoy it and i think it was a courtesy to not be in other people's faces you know standing up with your cell phone and all that so i was hard pressed to get a, a decent picture of the bride and groom and then i found this on their facebook so the reception was in uh, redondo beach and matt and uh, vanessa have been together for like 11 years, 11 years. And there were like 100 people at the wedding. It was just glorious. It was about family. And I would say, okay, we have a small family, but Vanessa comes from a huge family. If there were like 100 people there, I would say only 15 were not blood, max, you know? So it was just joyous. But me, mom, pop, that's John's folks. And of course, this is our nephew from John's side were deceased and Matt's all about family. I think this might be the most special thing on the face of the earth on his lapel. Just put that in your head, people, that if you're hosting a wedding and there are family members that are sadly missed, I just, that was unbelievable, unbelievable. It was um, a reunion of cousins and cousins meeting cousins for the very first time. Now, Vanessa, the bride, really put this thing together, and it was, the detail was amazing. And one of the things was we had assigned seating, and in each kid's place, I think there were four, I think, um, there was this little coloring book, and it was probably uh, at a uh, little clipboard, and it was probably maybe... 20 pages deep of things for the kids to keep them busy during, you know, the reception. And I think the last page was draw a picture of today's wedding. It was wonderful. Oh, but wait, what about the adults? Okay. <laughs> they had a photo booth. Guys, it was a party. And you've got um, Tyler on the left, Adair on the right cousins. You've got the two new cousins in the middle, and then there's Claire that is married to Tyler. Oh my gosh, we had so much fun. We had so much fun that I slept 13 hours last night. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and then I mean, Vanessa, there were so many details. I've never quite seen a wedding disappointed. Um, they somehow couldn't, sh they had a slideshow they were going to do or something, and they couldn't put it, get it together. And I guess somebody brought a broken projector. I mean, I don't even know, but we got it yesterday. And I said to the bride and groom, it was so much better, so much better actually having it yesterday because, I mean, maybe we all drank a little bit and we were dancing our brains out, and I don't even dance. I was dancing my brains out. I requested the song Love Shack, which never played, 
but I had the two little ones in my hotel room the night before, and we were practicing our moves and stuff like that. Oh, it was so much fun. And another funny thing is that, you know, we'll be doing the tie quilt in January. And I think I had mentioned this, and I don't know if I did or not, but I got a beautiful box of ties from a pediatrician I don't know, and I'll never, never know. And I had John shop for his tie in there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And John kept saying, what's wrong with my ties? And I go, I don't know, but when you've got this one, stay away. <laughs> That's what you're wearing. I have my little friend with me. Oh, she was so, so so happy to see us home. Okay, this is from Mickey. And those, um, I love this quilt of hers. She made it a while back. It's a Morris, right? Morris Fabrics. And it's absolutely William Morris. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mickey, for sending us that. I think she had a jump start on doing it. Okay, and then we have Joanne who has sent in her blue baskets and they're ready to go. Okay, what are we doing today? We're doing the broken dishes, all right? So that's what we'll be working on today. It's so, I, I'm going to say again, there was a grandma who got the blue kit and the orange kit and is making a quilt for each little kid, girls that are sharing a room. It's going to be glorious, all right? And then this is Donna. Okay, so Donna, I just got this this morning, and sorry it's sideways, but that's not the story. The story is, is she couldn't figure out why the corners weren't working. And so she said, oh, forget it. And then she just rounded off the corners. Well, she said, I think she put too many petals in or something, but it just didn't come together. And this is a case of lemonade. Um, she was frustrated with the corners. She decided to round them. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I might like it better than mine if you want to get right down to it. So that's when you don't freak out. You just go with the flow and, and make it. Okay. Oh, by the way, I do have a trick or treat for you at the end. B-O-M, trick or treat. Am I going to treat you or am I going to trick you? Take a guess. Okay. And then this is Marge's and it is hard. I think the name of the pattern was Harvey, but in any case, it's what Dee was doing. And she tried to post it on the forum to no avail. Uh, it's, it is flipping adorable Marge and really check out the quilting in this, you guys, how she took each little segment and just quilted it differently. I do not think we have any kits left of that, but um, probably there's a pattern somewhere on the site. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and speaking of the site, apologize for not being here Friday. We're going to do my favorite, or the warehouse favorite things or stuff that Kristen and Suzanne love. They've just come in. We were going to tape it last Wednesday, and that's when all H-E-double-L broke out at the warehouse with the plumbing. So I'm going after today, and that will air on Wednesday. And we have such a massive team at TQS, pants on fire. Somehow we forgot to get the memo to the newsletter and, and to Mary Kay. So for that, we apologize. That was our trick. <laughs> It'll be on Wednesday, all right? So I apologize for that. Okay. Okay, we have a ton of people here. What we're going to talk about are the broken dishes, which, whoa, what was that? Um which is in here, okay? A broken dish is a really, really simple block, but I, what I want you to note here is how the fabrics blend together. So that's what I learned from my cave class. I mean, I'm the school of dark and light, dark and light, dark and light, and no, 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 he likes to blend things. So let's take a look at the, oh, let me get out of the way too. You can see that the center for broken dishes blocks, which are 12 inches. Each broken dish is six inches, but they're 12 inches. They're kind of lighter and the outside edges one are kind of darker, but we purposely, oh, this is just fabulous. We purposely put kits together that were very blendy so that you could get that effect. You can push the center, if you so like, it's your quilt, you can do whatever you want, but we've gotten some light ones in here that you can intermingle with these darker ones and get your kind of the lighter looking, um, she's okay. I think she's okay. John just came in here. Um, 
for the center and then push it out to the dark. But again, it's, it's not about getting, let's see, like this. It's not about that. It's more about blending them. Let's see. And then that's, oh, that's a good one. Well, they're all good. Um, it's all about blending them, not light and dark, dark and light. It's moving from one color to another. So we've got here the blue, and then we have the blue and um, pink and green. And then over here, pink, blue, green. And then over here, we have more green with blue. It's about blending them. And with what, what we've provided in the kit, you don't have to think that much about it, all right? And then also in the kits, of course, then we have, you know, the polka dots and binding. And whoops, they aren't going to be exactly like mine, but I would take any of these home with me in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Okay, so what Broken Dishes is, is it is basically four quarter square triangles. So I'm going to fly over to my PowerPoint and fly on my broomstick and show you there how I did it. I, I toyed with whether or not I should do PowerPoint or not. And then I looked at what I had and it was much better than what I would be able to reproduce here on my Bernina. And by the way, I got a couple requests for coupons. They're going out today. Okay. So let me see if I can find our PowerPoint. Here we go. Got to find it on the side. I'm going to blow this up. This was obviously done before my quilter select. All right, so here is, okay, again, this broke, the singular broken dish will finish at six inches, okay? So the way those arrows are going, that's pointing out your bias. And you guys know I am a flipping maniac about bias. You don't pull it as it goes through the machine. You're very, very respectful when you press it and all that. So here I've cut one. Here I just have two different colors. For what you're doing, you're gonna want four, all right? And I counted up how many of those broken dishes there are there. I think they're 48, but don't quote me on that. So you can cut a bunch of these quarter square triangles and mix and match, all right? So here we go. I have sewed it together. I have set the seams while all the time completely avoiding the bias edge. I am pressing, my guess by looking at this is to the green. And as I have mentioned before, um, I press on a very firm surface so that I don't stretch the bias when I get up there. I also, um, I probably, well, here I might not use steam, I don't think so. But I go up and I go off and I'm pressing from the top side. I can't tell you how many times in teaching people would have tucks in there in the pressing and that'll, that'll mess you up beyond, beyond measure, okay? So there we go, just right up there, pull off, pull off, there we go. Okay, yes, so I've pressed to the green on both sides. So, of course, seams are going in opposite directions. This is the most standard, perfect union you can get with, um, with seams and pressing and pinning. So the next thing we do is you're going to drop pins in about an eighth of an inch before the seam and an eighth of an inch after the seam. And I cannot recommend enough my Quilters Select pins. They're sharp, they have glass head pins, and they're nice and fine. Okay, really look at this because I'm gonna show you, I believe, on the next one. Okay, an eighth of an inch before, an eighth of an inch after, hold on. And then note that where it's going under the fabric, that is going to be my quarter inch seam. Sometimes when people pin, they do something like this. Well, what the heck is that going to help you out on anything, right? Forget it. And so, and so let's go back to the difference. I might even have one where they're together. Nice and tidy. Now, of course, my pins are going in that way because I'm a left-hander. It doesn't matter if they go the other way. Don't do that. Okay, there we go. I got a good and a not so good. You'd be amazed at how many people 
do super sloppy pinning. Now, D, who does our Saturday samplers, she pins completely different. This is how I do it, okay? And then before I go to the machine, I might very well add a little bit of glue stick yeah, to the tips on each end, just so they don't shift. Okay, so here we go. Before I sew it, I open it up gently and make sure the seams look as if they're aligning. You can go one step more, uh, loosen up your uh, length, your stitch to a big stitch, go stitch it and then open it up. And then if it's wrong, you're not having to pick out the whole thing. And uh, speaking of picking out, it's tough. You don't, picking out on a bias is always dangerous, no matter how you slice it. So that is why you always want your seam to be um, just big enough that your seam ripper can slip through and just do it like you're doing open heart surgery. And I, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, there are many times I might just say, well, forget that and just throw it out and start over. All right. So now what we can do, we could press that final seam open, but in the case of this particular block, I like to twirl the underneath side. And so you can see on the left-hand side, I've started to pick out that one stitch, the stitch that goes from the finished seam to the raw edge. On the right, you can see that, right? And then you can press it so, and you don't end up with a big, huge lump on the back. Now, that said, you're probably having to press this from the back side, right? So my pants just caught on fire. So press it from the back side, and then go ahead and press it from the top, making sure you don't get um, tucks in there. There, that's beautiful, in my humble opinion. That is exactly what you're going for. Now that all the biases are sewn up, you can press it like there's no tomorrow. You could even throw a shot of steam, a little shot of spray starch or whatever, and get that thing nice and flat, and then feel free to cut off the bunny ears. All right, um, when you cut off the bunny ears, then it's ready to go. So let me get back up here, let me cut off PowerPoint so something crazy doesn't start happening. Okay, wait, uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. I see a little bit of a treat, a little bit of a trick. Okay, um, let me get back on my face. There we go. All right. So um, then, what you're going to do is again. I think I, I think it's thirty forty eight. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. I sixteen and sixteen. I don't know. Maybe it's thirty eight. Don't just count it and do do what the instructions say. Don't do what I say. Okay. <clears throat> now, before we get to our trick or treat, what about using the double pins? Kathy asks. You know, I've never really had luck with the double pins, but if they work for you, always work what's for you. This is why you take classes. This is why you learn from other people, because for some people, that might just be fantastic. For me, mm -mm, mm -mm, I, don't, I don't care for it. And I think the other reason is because when I'm doing the three pin method, where you have one on one side, one on the other, and then you have one in the center that's sticking up, like when you're getting points together, you, you, I don't think those would work. All right. So, but again, you, everybody, this is why quilting is so much fun. Everybody does it differently, etc. Okay. We have people from all over the world here, which I absolutely love. Peru. Okay. Let me look down here. Um, <clears throat> okay, is it Diolinda? Good afternoon from Massachusetts. Finally get to see you live since I'm off work for a four-day retreat. That's your treat right now. Okay, so we finally got the BOM in the warehouse, all right? And um, Kristen won't let me show the whole thing at all yet, so I've got to give you a treat, but be kind of mean and play a trick. And Sarah Bilkey made it. Yes, John? 
Yeah, you talked about that. Yeah. Sarah Filkey made it from down under. So it has the Sarah Filkey look and happiness and style to it. Now, what Kristen said I could do is show you some little, like, I'm going to tease you a little bit. All right. So I think that's what came up before. Oh, I want to say that the fabric for the most part is Tula Pink. We, um, we couldn't get our hands on that background. And so Kristen designed a background. Yeah, our Kristen, that's essentially the same thing, only they're little squares. And honestly, the fabric's a little bit brighter. And I think that it's going to be fan flipping tastic so you could i know it's going to be fan flipping tastic i saw the i saw the fabric and frankly i want to i'm going to get some if there's any extra um <clears throat> so there's pieced stars in it of course there's applique and you could see that sarah snuck in a little bit of cafe too so that even if you're working with the kit um there's there's a lot of room for adding your own thing oh Looks like there's some piecing sneaking in on the right. Look at that. I'm going to say, I will say this. There's an inner border of which these birds are part of it. It's one of the best inner borders I've ever seen in my life. In my life. So, Sarah Filkey, we honor you for being our 2023 Block of the Month person. And John is going to start a promotion tomorrow. If you are not a member of the quiltshow.com, the block of the month is a perk. It's free to you. And that's for 49 bucks a year. Okay. Now, because we haven't ended this year yet, if you were to join, say in November, you're going to get not only all of this last year's BOM, but also next year's. So that's just an FYI. He's going to put out a full promotion about it to explain it. And also remember, when you are a, um, a new member or resubscribing, you get a 25% discount shopping in our shop. And one shot, one shot, okay? Um, the other thing is that we are working on the warehouse sale. Again, it starts, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday before Thanksgiving. Don't worry, we will um, get you in queue. And unfortunately, we do have to take signups, and it's going to look really weird, but there is a reason for our madness, all right? It is, it is we're going to put people in five-minute increments, so we're figuring that people will shop for about a half hour and have to check out, and that will keep the rotation in there. It's a small warehouse, and I think I've shared in the past, it has one-butt aisles. <laughs> one butt. That's it. <laughs> so... Um, I, it's going to be a lot of fun. <clears throat> we found an ancillary pay, place for people to park so we don't get spanked by our landlords. And um, it's just going to be fun. Alrighty. So let me know how. Kathy, how you join is you... John, come in here. I'm a member for life. Explain to Kathy how do you join. Join, join the quilt show. And I mean, she should really wait till tomorrow, right? Or not necessarily. No. Oh. Wait till tomorrow. What? Wait till tomorrow. But then how does she do it tomorrow? She goes up and join now. You go up in the upper right and you hit join now. Wait till tomorrow. Because we have a really cool promotion that we're doing this Christmas. We always try and do a nice little gift for everybody. And that starts tomorrow. Really, John? Okay, so let's do that. All right. Um, so, will I be in Houston? Lisa, no. The wedding basically did me in. I was going to go to Fest Market. Um, I will never do both Market and Festival again. It is too much. Just too much. Uh, 13 days in Houston will kill the strongest of us. <laughs> and so I was all committed to go to Market and then the wedding happened. Um, I didn't even switch my gear to festival. I, and I don't even know why. Now, I know Justin will be there. Lilo's going to be there. We're going to be getting some interviews. Mary Kay is going to be there. So, um, sadly, no. Uh -uh. But we'll be bringing you stuff from Houston. We're going to, uh, Lilo um, and John, that's his name, Justin and Mary Kay are going to be getting pictures. We're going to be getting interviews. So if you can't go, I'm hoping that this is the next best thing to going to Houston. Super bummed. 
Okay, so uh, the quilter select booth Kelly is in with B sew in. That's where it's going to be residing in B sew in. All right, it's going to look like a full booth by itself, but that's where it's going to be. Okay, so on Wednesday, um, for those of you that are not going to Houston, <laughs> I'll take you. You can even watch after. You can see what um, really cool things we've gotten in. Um, what booth will sell Quilters Select merchandise at Festival? Be so in. Be so in. So look for that. Because um, we've got some new cool stuff. Okay. Uh, be so in. Be so in. Okay. So on Wednesday, for those of us that aren't going, we'll take you on a little shopping excursion and show you some really cool new things. I kind of went into a heart attack mode when I went out there and went, what is all this stuff? People don't even know about this stuff. So yeah. Okay. Have a great day. So this is how this week's going to roll. My, here, here I am. Be mean with your trick or treat. Um, Wednesday, uh, their favorite things, warehouse, whatever. And then Friday's Barbara Black. And then um, Saturday is D. Christopher. We've got you people busy. We have you busy. And I'm so thrilled that you're a part of this whole scene. It makes my heart happy. Okay, I think we've got it. I'm out to the warehouse. Out we go. My favorite things at the warehouse. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me.